I wanted to talk about the butt pack and how to use it. Now, this is not per some Army SOP. This is not based on you know anything that I've uh, really necessarily found. I've gotten some ideas from here and there on uh, what you could do with a butt pack or what you could put in it. But overall, this is based on my experience from using a butt pack and um, I had been trained with one and so I got a few ideas here and there on the concept behind it and now I'm going to talk about how to implement it in the most effective way. And it is an effective tool for uh, carrying things consistently or uh, being an exclusive way of carrying a certain amount of gear. Now the purpose behind a butt pack, uh, it could be. Uh, here's some options for you. Number one, it could be your sustainment load. If you're planning on, like for you preppers out there that might have a lot of land to cover, you might actually, it, hopefully you're going out on a team, but these would be your personal sustainment items for up to about 12 to 18 hours, I would say. I would not say about 24 hours, but 12 to 18 hours. Maybe you want to observe a position for a while, but you don't need a big backpack with, you know, enough for World War III, like enough ammo and enough water for four days or whatever. Some people will pack a ridiculous amount just because they have room. But a butt pack helps you stay compact. And if you fill this thing up too much, you're going to look like a damn wasp. Uh, that's just how you're going to end up looking. You're going to look kind of awkward if you carry too much. But and if you fill this up unnecessarily. So with all that said, you want to keep it logical. You want to keep it lightweight. And here's the thing, if you're not just using a butt pack and you are going to be out for maybe 24 hours on an L LPOP as a team or whatever, you're going to be gone for a little while and you're still wanting to plan accordingly and you have a day pack on top of that, then of course this is going to be smaller than what this is because this is right now as it's packed is about a 12 to 18 hour load. So I would downgrade this and I would transfer some things to a day pack or I'd just leave them out depending on uh, what the mission was or whatever, but this would turn into a sustainment uh, load, basically an emergency load, uh, really. So um, I'll go ahead and discuss that along the way, but there's different ways to use it, and uh, the first one I discussed is basically exclusively using this like a little backpack, and the second way is basically just a sustainment load, an emergency load. So you can have all your quote unquote evasion or survival stuff on you, but you're still keeping it lightweight and it's items that you won't really need to get to right away unless you really have the time to get this stuff off and take care of uh, whatever you need to take care of. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get into this and get this going because this could turn into a long video if we don't. So, You'll notice that this butt pack, most butt packs actually will have a way to lash stuff on them and this even has some uh, Alice attachment points on the side so you can attach little things here and there uh, like a non-trauma uh, medical pouch, a medical first aid pouch. Uh, those can actually be turned into a, a, uh, a personal, a self-aid uh, pouch, if you will, because the IFAC is really for somebody else to treat you. You should have uh, access to your own self-aid pouch. Now, I have this in inside just because it can take up weight, and I really don't like the idea of attaching this, number one, because it has a button closure. There's no other way to secure it except for a button. It could get snagged and open, but I, I could also just carry this in one of my pockets. But it's all contained in one of these, like, first aid or uh, compass pouches. Basically this is for like deep cuts like this. You can see this is a nice through and through. It went from here all the way there. So basically you can see it went all the way through straight. And so this thing bled a good amount. Obviously I wasn't going to lose the finger but I got some things in here like a triangle bandage. This isn't for like making slings. It can be. You can make a sling out of it I guess. But I wouldn't really be using it just for a sling. I'd be using it to lash down or kind of kind of like a gauze and kind of like a wrap or something like that to help with wounds or whatever. Uh, then obviously some tape, medical tape, band-aids. Band-aids are not for like little cuts and stuff. Band-aids are kind of for cuts, but what it's for, at least in this uh, case, is I would use a band-aid. You have your sterile non-stick area in the middle, and basically I would pull these two pieces of skin together 
and then just to keep it closed in the replacing stitches, having one sticky side and then pulling it back over and keeping it nice and tight and then sticking the other side of the band-aid on there. And, you know, that's an option. And then have like gauze or, or whatever if you wish. Or just tape down the band-aid if that's something you can do. Like if you have like a hemostat, a, a hemostatic agent or whatever to stop the bleeding, then that's good. But really this is your own self-age care system. And that's just an idea if you want to have that on here. It's somewhere where you'll have the time to take this stuff off, get a drink of water, calm yourself down from, you know, cutting yourself open or whatever. But it's up to you, but that's a piece of gear that I actually would recommend. So the first piece of gear here that I would recommend having in here regardless of the situation is a lightweight poncho. This is something that you could buy on Amazon for very cheap. This is not something that's like the military issue. It's not heavy as the military issue. It's, it's smaller than the military issue as far as weight and, I believe, size. It's relatively the same size, but it is not as good as it. It's not going to let you pull up water. This isn't good for covering up gear. This is good for wearing on your person in an emergency. So whether you're going out for 12 to 18 hours and you're in an area where it could rain, in the desert, you probably you probably know your weather pretty well and you'll be able to see rain far off, but Poncho is also good for keeping out of the sun. So <clears throat> anyways, if it does rain, water will run off reliably off of this poncho, but it's not going to pull up. So this is a really good way to have a kind of waterproofing layer instead of carrying around a heavy Gore-Tex or something. This weighs like <laughs> only a few ounces, but anyways, it's hooded, so I would wear this. So I'd have to take off my gear to put this on because I'm not going to put this on over my gear. So I've got to take it off anyways and I'm going to put it inside. I'm not going to lash it on because of snagging and just more crap. I don't want to have to deal with more, sna uh, more straps than I have to. So I would have it on the top on the inside. Most likely that I would have to have this than anything else really, depending on the situation. Now, if you are one of those, uh, if you are part of a unit or in an area where you're most likely going to have to go set up like an LPOP or something like that, you're going to need some kind of static concealment assistance, then something like a sniper veil or a scarf would be a good idea. Now, if it's just a scarf, like a, a something like that, and you have a system like this with canteens or whatever, put the scarf underneath your canteen. It's not going to take up uh, much space. You can fold it up really easily. With this, you can't really do that all that easily. So. One storage method for the sniper veil is to uh, go ahead and put everything you want in here. And if you feel like you're going to need it faster, then you're going to need your poncho. Put your poncho inside here or underneath or whatever. But close it up because this thing can actually snag. It can actually grab a lot of crap and it can actually get torn on a lot of stuff. So you can either have it inside or just fold it over like this and just secure it in place. But most of the time I'm just going to have it inside. So, the next thing is more electrical tape. You may not need as much as this, so you might want to wait until you get one that's like half, uh, half of a full roll, and then have it inside here. Again, you're working with weight. This is good signaling stuff. I have an IR and I have a blue, nice bright blue. Works day or night, good for signaling. And then also touch-up paint. I have Predator War Paint. This stuff is uh, pretty good regardless of um, whether you're using a day pack or not. So this would be something I would have all the time. Good for touching up your face paint or whatever, camouflaging yourself. 550 cord, non-negotiable, all the time have 550 cord on you. Then of course I have electrolyte powder. I would use the Noon stuff, which is basically N-U-U-N, and that's a good electrolyte um, tablets that you can get kind of in like a long pill bottle. And those are pretty good for electrolytes if you're going to be out for a while. Extra food. And it's in a waterproof uh, container, basically an MRE container. Once this gets punctured, you're going to have to replace it. And it happens or you mess with it or you take it out and everything. Yeah, yeah. This is not food. This is a weapons clean kit and it is very basic. It is a boar snake, a uh, rolled up uh, basically a t-shirt sleeve that I cut off and rolled up and put in here and a bottle of lubricant and it's not even that much lubricant. So of course we got a main meal, in, main meal in here and a little snacky poo, nut raisin mix. This is high calories, this is over 500 calories in here. The only thing of all of this that I would say that you do not need to have around in here at all times 
would just be this. This sniper veil, I would say, is optional to the mission that you are going to have. However, if you want to have a scarf to kind of throw over your face, if you're going to be in the prone and observing for a short amount of time, you can put that on and put it in, you know, your backup canteen. Like for this one, for this summer, I'm going to need a mosquito net. So I'm putting this mosquito net, this Vietnam era uh, mosquito netting that you put over your booty, I'm putting it underneath a canteen. If I'm wearing Alice gear or whatever, I'm going to put it at the bottom of a pouch. Probably not the ammo pouch since it could get snagged on that, but yeah, works uh, pretty well in a canteen pouch. But knowing what you're going to have based on your mission is a good idea. And if I was going to use this for the 12 to 18 hour, uh, you know, little patrol or whatever, then yeah, I would probably have some extra ammo in here, maybe a, a bottle of water or something like that, like a, like a frozen bottle of water if I can even get it to freeze, <laughs> you know, in bad times or whatever. But with all that said, you got to think about how you're going to use this stuff. Do you really need a day pack for it? Uh, do you really need a day pack or you just need something that's smaller and can be on your person all the time? But also, you need to make sure that all this stuff is lightweight and it's not going to weigh you down. You can see all the stuff that I have in here. It seems like a good amount, but really, you saw at the beginning, there really wasn't all that much space taken up by this stuff. So, the butt pack can allow you to carry a good amount of stuff, but it is really on you to keep your system lightweight. And system being, you know, everything you're carrying, really. So do what you can to keep the weight down. And I promise you the butt pack can actually be a very valuable tool. Even if you are wearing a day pack or a rucksack or whatever, this really doesn't get in the way all that much. That's, that's not something I've ever had a problem with uh, in all the time I've used a butt pack. So with all that said, before this gets ridiculously long, that is uh, how to use a butt pack, and it's pretty simple. It's good pretty much if you, if you can. I would uh, carry one. It's good for emergency gear that you don't need to find a small pouch for, or you need to actually have your day pack on you because it's the only thing that will have room for it all. This can, this can have a lot of room, and you can still uh, put some stuff on it if you wish. But uh, with all that said, butt pack still a good option, and this is how to use it. Thanks a lot for watching.